welcome to episode 7 of the Slow Pace Knitting Space. My name is Michelle Matthews and I'm coming to you from Northern Alberta, Canada. Today is May 2nd, and, uh, 2021, and this is a knitting podcast. Although um, I don't actually have a lot of knitting, so today's episode is going to be very short and mostly not knitting. Um, last episode I showed my round two socks for Sock Madness, uh, which is called All the Bees, because it has brioche, baubles, beads, and I really like them. But uh, I've actually been kind of losing my knitting mojo. I can feel it ebbing away and other creative juices are kind of flowing in. So I've just gone with the flow. I haven't worked on those. I do want to finish them. And I have been um, working more on my designs. So I published my very first uh, grown-up sock pattern. And it's called the Torg Socks. I'll put a picture beside me for a few seconds. Um, and I've talked about them at length in other videos. But for those of you who are new, welcome to my channel. And um, the Torg Socks are knit cuff down. They are, it's a textured sock of knits, pearls, and slip stitches. And it's your basic heel flap and gusset. It's a good pattern for a beginner because there's nothing scary or complicated. And it's a good pattern for someone who's not a beginner because uh, I think it will be easy to memorize and to work uh, in a vehicle or when you're watching TV. So um, that's available on Ravelry and PayHip. Uh, but I published that and I was just so excited. I wanted to publish sock patterns for a long time. And I'm working on my second sock pattern. That's the only thing I've been knitting on in the last two weeks. And I finished the first sock of the Max socks. These are named after and inspired by my cousin Max, who uh, got leukemia as a child and died um, when he was eight. And that was 15 years ago. But I know, I have kids of my own, so I think about that sometimes. Um, so I wanted to make a sock pattern where I will donate profits from it to uh, the Children's Story Hospital in Edmonton, which is where my cousin Max stayed a lot. And so this sock um, has motifs from Mario Kart and Banjo-Kazooie. And so I it's a little bit hard to tell with this yarn because I didn't pick a super contrasty one. Um, but you have the racing checkers and the Mario star and question mark that's on the boxes. And for Banjo Kazooie, you have the honeycomb life bar, puzzle pieces, and music notes. Um, so uh, it's been a lot of fun actually introducing these games to my own kids. They really like my my kids really like playing Mario Kart. They're not quite ready for Banjo Kazooie, I think. But, yeah, so this has a, <laughs> I'm filming in the evening instead of in the morning, so the sun is doing some funny things. But this has a slip stitch heel and just a, a round toe, which is my favorite toe. And, yeah, that's what I've been working on. That's the only thing I've knit. And I finished these up sometime last week. And I want to, the pattern is mostly written up and charted and everything, and I just want to work on that coming up. And then I will hope to publish in the beginning of June, which will be really nice. And that's it for knitting. That's all I've been knitting. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can just turn this a little bit. There. How's that? Perhaps this is why I shouldn't film at night. Oh well, that's how it is today. Uh, the next thing I've been working on is I've been sewing some masks for myself and for my kids. Um, last year I, I sewed some masks and I felt like I was super late to the game because I sewed them in May and I was like, are these, are we even going to be wearing these? 
<laughs> they have come in super handy for the last year, but um, they're getting kind of ratty. Uh, these are my boys' masks. Um, they're getting kind of ratty uh, and stained. I put different fabrics on the inside so they could tell whose was whose. Um, it's time to make some new ones. Oh, and my son was outgrowing his. He said it hurt his ears to wear. And um, a few months ago or more, my aunt gave us these fabric panels that have animal faces or some really goofy looking faces and to make masks with. And so that's what I've been doing. And I made, I decided to practice with myself because I don't mind if it doesn't work out. So I practiced um, a mask for me and this is it. I just think it's so silly. I, I really, it's just so funny. <laughs> I really like it. Um, but it's a bit big. I've been having a hard time with the sizing. I followed a pattern from a video, which I will link. And it's really straightforward, but I found the sizing to be difficult. So mine is a little bit big and my oldest son's. <laughs> My oldest son's is a bit big for him too. Um, so I'm going to practice, make a few more on scrap fabrics. And then once I get the sizing right, then I'll make some with the face panels. So that was, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I don't actually have a sewing room right now because my nursery is a sewing room. So my bedroom has become the temporary sewing room. So. I should hurry up and make those masks, and then I will have this clean bedroom again. It's always something, isn't it? <laughs> if it's not laundry, it's all the sewing stuff. Um, but yeah, and then the, the next thing I've been working on lately is I've been mending. And I, I think uh, visible mending is really neat. I think it's a really artistic way to, to bring new life into something that has worn through. I, I think it's... It's a good practical creative outlet and I really love the, that kind of thing. I love when you can be creative and make something beautiful and you can use it. So yeah, I haven't done a whole lot of like beautiful men's yet, um, but that's mostly because I'm practicing the techniques. And so uh, my first one is on this sweater of mine. This is one of my favorite sweaters. It's actually, it's a nursing sweater, so it has these zippers that come down, but I totally wear it when I'm not nursing. But the armpit had a hole in it, and so I followed a video tutorial, which I will also link, and I fixed the armpit. And something that's just kind of special about this yarn that I picked is that, unless I'm mixing it up with a different yarn, it's made out of denim and my grandma made this yarn. My grandma who passed away when I was 10. So it's just nice to have things from hers. And I asked my grandpa if he had a darning egg and so he let me have this and so I've been using this a lot for mending things. And when I first tried it, it was super awkward and it was like, why is this helpful? Why would I use this? But I found out that <laughs> One of the biggest things it does is it holds it open a little bit so you can get some stretch. Um, but it also makes it so you don't sew through the other side and for a sock, so your sock shut or something. So it was a little fiddly at first, but I really grew to appreciate that sturdiness and spreading stitches open. Um, that was really helpful. So I mended this sweater. Um, and then I've been working on these socks for my husband. And these socks are a very special pair. This was a Sock Madness qualifier pattern a few years ago. I forget what it's called, but I'll put it in the video. And this is knit out of Sweet Georgia Yarns, Tough Love Sock. And then the green is Yak Yarn. That's just so cool. <laughs> We've always just kind of laughed about yaks. I think maybe maybe in Monsters, Inc. they talk about milking a yak. I don't know. Yaks are just funny. 
so Yak Yarn was super exciting. I always wanted to use it. I got it in a swap, but the only thing is it was 100% Yak Yarn, which means there was no nylon in it, so it had no elasticity or very little elasticity, it had no durability, no wear to it. And so the toes just wore out with these big gaping holes, and I have a picture of that. And so what I've been doing is I had mended these before. The light green patches are my original mends the first time it wore through. And then these uh, other green colors. I'm using this yarn. It's an opal yarn. These other patches are, are done just recently. So, yeah. Uh, the method, which I will have already linked, but it's in the description, is really good for those really big holes, actually. And, yeah, I'm, I've been enjoying it. I've just been using it here and here. And I noticed, when I took a second look at this sock, that it has a spot that is already starting to wear out, but it's not a big hole. And so this one, I will use this technique. I don't know what it's called, but you kind of... You use the yarn you're fixing to make like a spine, not a spine, like a rib cage to protect it and then you almost duplicate stitch over it. And this one I might just duplicate stitch or I might do a mixture of both. But it's just wearing through. So I think I can catch it in time to do a small fix and save it. Then, I was telling one of my friends about how I've been working on mending, and she mentioned that she has a pair of socks that uh, a mutual friend we have who used to live in India brought back for her, and she said she loves these socks, and she has worn them right through. And so, these are actually beautiful socks. Somebody made these, and they're just very nice. But, yeah. I'll get the other one to show because I'm working on that one. So there's holes in the toe and the heel on the first sock there has is a bigger hole but yeah it's definitely wearing through. I'm kind of curious about what the fiber content of these socks is. I feel like that's just my nerd coming through. What's it made out of? What What weight is this? Did you do intarsia in the round with color work? That's so much work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm fixing it with some light green sock yarn that I have that does have nylon. So, oh, you can see it in action, the method I'm using. So it has these, I went through and like did great big loose stitches and now I'm coming by row by row to to fill it in and strengthen it, basically. And so, yeah. I was talking with my son while I was working on it, and he was saying that it looked like a lot of work, or it looked hard, and, you know, it's the kind of challenge that you look at and you go, I can do that, and it's just kind of invigorating. So I'm really genuinely excited to work on these and see how they turn out when I'm done. You can see where she did darn it a little bit and mend it before, but it wore right through. There's a big hole under there. So hopefully this will last. <laughs> we'll see. And if it doesn't, I'm happy to fix it again. And that's it. That is all I've been working on. The only other thing I have to show it's some stuff I picked up at the thrift store recently, which is not actually even knitting related. Um, they had a set of really itty bitty crochet hooks. So that's those. One of them, they got 1.15 millimeters, 1.4, 1.25, and I picked up a 1.6. Um, so these are for your crochet thread, the, the really little lace stuff. And 
all of these will work to bead beads onto knitting as well. Um, although I have found that using a crochet, crochet hook to bead your knitting is kind of, it's hard to grab the yarn because the hook is so much smaller than the yarn you're working with. But yeah, I got those and then I got some mending stuff. I got a thimble, so I didn't actually have a thimble. I got needles and I got these doodads that I don't know what they're called, but I have seen a lot of videos where people use them to fix stuff. So I just saw them and I was thinking, I'm going to want these once I get more into it. But I know that's a dangerous uh, waters to tread, but it was at a thrift store at a very, very reasonable price. So uh, yeah, so it's a gamble I'm willing to take, I think. That's it. Now that the sun has gone down and the lighting is better, I'm all done. And that's okay. Oh! That reminds me of something I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to mention briefly that something else I've been thinking about lately is about letting go of my need for things to be perfect, to embrace imperfection, and to aim for consistency. And so that especially shows itself in the masks, that I want to work on the masks and get better as I work on it. And the same with mending. I'm not trying to make these beautiful works of art yet. I want to actually do it and learn the technique and then learn to make it more beautiful and more artful. Um, and also for this podcast, I always like to film in the morning when somebody's napping and the kids are uh, occupied by the TV or outside or, or somewhere or something. Um, but instead I'm doing it when they're in bed because <laughs> it's not dark outside when they're in bed anymore, which is nice and not so nice, but it definitely opens up options for filming even though it's not perfect because well the sun was shining in my face for instance or the lighting might be different or I rushed to do it so I didn't take any time to do my makeup but I'm trying to work on being consistent with what I want to do and doing it even if it's not perfect um, so. thanks for watching and bye for now